So apparently the Obama administration is giving up on the Trans-Pacific Partnership. This is a victory for populists on both the left and the right who are currently pushing their respective parties away from their traditional support for free trade. But I think central to that are disastrous trade agreements which have allowed corporate America to shut down in this country, move to Mexico, move to China, move to other low-wage countries, produce their products there, and then bring those products back into the United States. Hillary Clinton was totally for the TPP just a short while ago. But when she saw my stance, which is totally against, she was shamed into saying she would be against it too. As is often the case with populism, this embrace of protectionism is fueled by ignorance and fallacies. First of all, he started by even mentioning special interests. He's like, well, why do you think this happens? You have corporations donating to the politicians. Politician is doing the bidding of the corporations. These are special interests who are getting their way. And lo and behold, they want these trade deals that allow them to ship good U.S. jobs overseas. Devastating point, totally accurate. Then he says, your husband signed NAFTA. You supported NAFTA. You called TPP the gold standard. So, yeah, th those things are facts. And those things are disastrous. The twin claims that manufacturing in the United States has been decimated and that free trade deals are to blame are both complete bullshit. Let's take a look. So first off, has American manufacturing declined as so many insist? Well, in terms of output, absolutely not. American manufacturing output is nearly at historic highs. If current trends continue, we will easily catch and surpass the pre-Great Recession peak. Furthermore, while it's true that China surpassed the United States as the world's largest manufacturer in 2010, the United States is still a strong second, producing more than our next three competitors combined. Now, employment is a different story. Yes, it's true that fewer people work in factories than have historically, but this is a long-term trend. In terms of total jobs, manufacturing peaked in the late 1970s. In terms of jobs as a percentage of GDP, manufacturing jobs peaked in 1949. The decline in both happened well before NAFTA, well before the United States joined the World Trade Organization, and well before Chinese imports flooded U.S. markets. So how do we explain this decline? The answers are automation and increases in efficiency, not outsourcing or cheap imports. According to a study from the American Economic Review, import competition explains only one quarter of the contemporaneous aggregate decline in U.S. manufacturing employment between 1990 and 2007. According to a Ball State study, the number is actually closer to 90%. Manufacturers have never produced more, yet have never employed fewer people. This is called efficiency. This is a thing that both people on the left and the right can get behind. Yep. Ending these shitty fucking trade deals. Getting rid of this NAFTA shit. Bringing jobs. Putting tariffs on fucking goods that are imported into this country. Bring jobs back here. Yeah, stop encouraging companies to outsource to other fucking places. We're not going to bring back the jobs with protectionism because by and large, the jobs never left. Now let's take a look at these supposedly horrible trade deals. These much maligned trade deals have been overwhelmingly beneficial to manufacturers, businesses, and consumers. The United States is currently the number one recipient of foreign direct investment and the world's third largest exporter. More than half of all imports into the United States, including those from China, consist of inputs, raw materials, and capital goods that are used by manufacturers to make globally competitive products. Because trade is reciprocal, putting tariffs on imports will lead to retaliation, closing markets and discouraging investment in the U.S. In fact, China has recently said that if President Trump wants a trade war, they're game. Perhaps most importantly, free trade benefits American consumers, especially the poor and working class. According to the Peterson Institute of Economics, the average American household gains somewhere between $7,100 and $12,900 in additional income in the form of lower prices. If the protectionists had their way, that would mean that people would not have this extra income, and hence they would have less money to spend on housing, health care, education, or even going out to eat, aka all things that actually support jobs here in America. These gains disproportionately help the poor and working class, because far more of their income is spent on more traded sectors, like food and clothing, and because they tend to shop much more at big box stores like Target and Walmart, which carry lots of Chinese-made goods. These people would be hit the worst by protectionist policies. Which brings me to my next point. Protectionism is a blatant and regressive form of wealth redistribution. A protective tariff is simply a tax on American consumers to subsidize politically well-connected industries. 
only a small share of U.S. manufacturers, and hence a small share of U.S. workers, are directly competing with foreign imports. This has led to the heavy lobbying of Congress by groups like the United Steelworkers, hoping to pass laws to insulate themselves from foreign competition. According to The Economist magazine, in 2009, the Steelworkers successfully convinced the Obama administration to put a 35% tariff on Chinese tires. This cost consumers $1.1 billion in higher prices, while saving about 1,200 jobs. That's $900,000 a job. Groups like this love protectionist policies because it allows them to sell their inferior products at uncompetitive prices at the expense of American consumers. And the populists are their useful idiots. Maybe there should have been a tariff on Chinese steel or whatever. You know, that's what helped build the industrial base of America was, was tariffs. And we don't yeah. do that stuff anymore. We do the opposite. Now, while the data is certainly important, I think our problem might be more cultural than anything. The statistical trends in manufacturing are nearly identical to those in agriculture during the late 19th century. Yet you don't hear people bemoaning the loss of farm jobs. In fact, most people would find that completely ridiculous. So why are factory jobs treated differently? Well, in the United States, people view manufacturing jobs as sacrosanct, and have unrealistic expectations as to what these jobs should be like. From the 1950s to around the mid-70s, a man could work a 40-hour week in a factory, live a middle-class life, support his entire family on his wage, not have to worry about changing jobs, and retire at a reasonable age. This is held up as the gold standard by protectionists. And they believe that if we simply get tough on China and renegotiate our trade deals, that we can get back there. Unfortunately, they are wrong. This period of American manufacturing was a result of World War II. Every industrial competitor we had was burnt to cinders, and tens of millions of working age men were killed. This unusual set of circumstances put American workers at a major advantage, but it was the exception and not the rule. Manufacturing jobs were not like this before this period. They were not like this after this period. They aren't like this in other countries, and in all likelihood, they will never be like this again. Yet the protectionists believe that we can crawl back to the good old days if we just bunker down and shut out the rest of the world with tariffs. That's not going to happen. Globalization is happening and we have to deal with it, not run away from it. This nostalgia is incredibly expensive, both in terms of dollars but also in terms of your liberty. If nothing else convinced you, maybe this will. Purely on a moral level, shouldn't you be free to exchange goods and services with people in other countries on your own terms? Well, not if the protectionists have their way, because of course, they know what's best for you.